SMT Nation, we back. We got a fierce wireless story here, and it's a T-Mobile network update. It's a very interesting one. There's a couple of possible angles to this. Let's go ahead and get through the actual factuals, and then we can go ahead and speculate on what this means for the company. All right, T-Mobile tees up 39 gigahertz tests in Las Vegas. Monica Alvin, Fierce Wireless, link for the article in the description. All right, so for those of you uh, that have been following the channel closely and you know how these frequencies work, uh, 39 gigahertz is millimeter wave territory, folks. That is an ultra high frequency, one that T-Mobile has not really built out much yet. All right, to give you guys perspective on that, uh, when they first launched millimeter wave, uh, when they first launched 5G, uh, essentially doing what you know Verizon was doing, uh, it was in the 39 gigahertz frequency, which I believe is N260, okay? Uh, and so Verizon is big on millimeter wave, uh, monetizing it, you know, mobile traffic as well as with fixed wireless access. Uh, T-Mobile has really done very little with it. Um, so it's been in like seven markets. I can tell you in the Cleveland area, I've only found like five operational sites. They say that there's like eight locations that have it. Uh, but I've only been able to like actually connect to about five or six. So it's not something that's been a big part of their network. But in the future, it looks like it's something they're going to explore. And it involves Las Vegas, Nevada. So the the true 5G focus for T-Mobile is and always will be their mid-band. Uh, and, and that's the N41 piece, you know, coming from the Sprint acquisition. Uh, but T-Mobile does have a lot of licenses in the millimeter wave frequencies 37 gigahertz, 39, and 47 gigahertz. Those are some pretty high frequencies, folks. I think they have some other stuff too. Either it's 24 or 28, I forget. Uh, but uh, it looks like T-Mobile has reached out to the FCC to gain special temporary authority from the agency to conduct tests on 39 gigahertz band. Now, this is interesting because they have 39 gigahertz live in Cleveland. They've got it live in Vegas. Why do they need an STA for testing? Uh, the only thing I could think of is they're changing how they plan on using it, right? So instead of, you know, the st st uh, standard 400 uh, megahertz bandwidth, maybe they're looking at exploring 800 megahertz bandwidth. Maybe they're looking to explore more than that. Uh, maybe they're looking to explore into fixed wireless access home internet to supplement what they're doing with the ultra wide, uh, the ultra capacity home internet. We'll tell you guys, in a place like Las Vegas, we have seen a lot of speed testing from other creators, you know, Carlos S. Tech being one of them and amongst others, and they show us congestion on the N41 channel, or even with, you know, 100 megahertz of N41 plus additional N41 with SA configuration, you know, two, cha uh, two channel aggregation. So th maybe that's what they're looking into, possibly. Uh, and it does note that they're reducing the number of locations where they want to run the testing. They're reducing it from 11 to 8. Maybe they just want to fine-tune it. Uh, that is an Ericsson market, so you guys know. And uh, I don't know. It looks so, so here's why I mentioned all those like bandwidth possibilities. I think it's 100 megahertz per block. So they got N11, 12, 13, 14. So there's 400 megahertz. One, two, three, four. There's another 400. So that's 800 megahertz of contiguous spectrum and how it can be optimized. So to me, I think this this might have something to do with maybe a new use case for them. Maybe it's certain hardware that they want to test, right? Maybe it's a gateway. Maybe it's an indoor gateway. Maybe it's an outdoor gateway. Maybe it's some repeaters. You know, maybe that's what it is. I know T-Mobile was speaking at a recent conference and they had finally opened up to the idea of millimeter wave. And that's because they have to folks. They've put this off as long as they could, right? They've, they've tried to stay away from the millimeter wave as long as they could. And their network clearly just, it can't be done without millimeter wave. You can't have massive market share right? In certain markets where they are very successful and lots of customers, and then also throw in fixed wireless access subscribers. So you're serving, <clears throat> excuse me, big mobile subscription, and then you're going to start serving fixed wireless access all on mid-band channels. It won't cut it. It won't be enough. So kicking up backhaul and then turning on millimeter wave spectrum on air, hanging antennas and nodes and all those things, it's a must. 
Vegas is one of those markets too. It was a big Sprint market. It's a big T-Mobile market now. And there's a lot of people there. I mean, there's a few million people, I believe, in the city. It's no joke, right? And they got surrounding suburbs that are pretty developed and market shares thick over there. So just throwing this out there. I think that's what this is really about. Um, but you guys can sound off in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Do you think this is more about just supporting mobile traffic? Or do you think is the, the demand from the T-Mobile Home Internet? Because again, the T-Mobile Home Internet folks, I mean, they've already crossed 1.5 million subscribers as of last quarter report. You're probably looking at another 600,000 fixed wireless subscribers added this quarter. That probably puts them over 2 million. They're probably going to end up somewhere around 8, 9, or 10 million. They're going to have to do millimeter wave for the fixed wireless, and they still need it for mobile support too. All right. And, you know, in towns where they got stadiums and colleges, in my opinion, it's a must. And isn't that ironic? You know, the carrier that was throwing shade at Verizon for going in so deep with millimeter wave turns out that they were the ones that were short sighted and they will have to eat crow. <laughs> Keep in mind, folks, this is the company that refuses to put the millimeter wave bands on their devices on their website. And then here they are back in it. They started with millimeter wave. They'll end with millimeter wave. <laughs> oh, man, it's good to be right. <laughs> I'm just having fun, folks. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching. Comment down below. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Patreon page, my Twitter handle, and my email address for business inquiries. And if you want to join, get early access to content and exclusives not found anywhere else, you can be a member just by hitting that join button down below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.